Now, don't get too excited because every single coin that I just poured out right here is fake. But in today's video, I'm going to show you multiple different ways that you can test your gold and silver to make sure the gold and silver in your stack is real. So let's get started. All right, so I put most of the coins away and we just kept out a few. Plus, I added a couple of real coins so we could go through and do the testing. Now, if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you know that I've covered this topic of testing coins before, but I wanted to put it into a quick video where I have all the testing methods in one video that you can reference and take a look at. And what I want to start with is not necessarily free, but it is very, very cheap, and it is a neodymium magnet. Now, I've actually shown this magnet on the channel before, in fact, very recently, and the reason that a neodymium magnet is very important is because silver is not magnetic. It is, however, diamagnetic, and I'll cover that in just a second but silver will not stick to a magnet. So let's quickly see which one of these will stick to a magnet and we will know immediately that they are fake. Here we go. Two of them instantly pulled up to our magnet, as you can tell. So we know for a fact that these two coins are fake. We are still gonna use them in other tests, but we don't have to go any farther. We are already done. We know these are fake with those. Those are out of the way. So these you can actually pick up on Amazon. They're actually really cheap. I'll put a link in the description below if you guys wanna get one on your own. But these are very awesome. They are very powerful, as you can hear as I pulled up the coins. So before we move on, I will show you what I mean by diamagnetic. And with a non-scientific term, it basically means that silver will react to magnetism, but it won't actually stick. So if I wave this magnet over this one and a half ounce candidate here, you will see that it reacts, it actually moves around with the magnetic field. It doesn't actually stick to the magnet, but it does move and if we take a look at it like this if you've ever heard of the silver magnetic slide we'll hit, put this at an angle and as you can see it definitely drops very very slowly because of the magnetism okay so this next method is far and away my favorite for testing silver coins and it's called the ping test and basically what that means is you are listening to the sound of like a silver eagle for example now i use a free app called ping coin it's right there that's what the icon looks like we're going to open it up and as you can see, what it has is a bunch of different already set frequencies for silver and gold. Now, the reason this works is because a silver eagle, for example, we're going to focus on that today, has a very specific weight, thickness, and diameter. Additionally, it also has a very specific mixture of silver. It is nearly impossible, in fact, I would say pretty much impossible, to replicate the sound of a silver eagle while also having the same diameter, thickness, and weight, unless it is also 999 fine silver. So this is really good for testing bullion coins. So what you basically do is you can take your silver eagle, you balance it on the edge of your finger, and then on the app, we open up silver eagle. I mean, there are a bunch of different options, but that's where we are today. And you just take a regular Bic pen while it's balanced on the edge of your finger and you tap it, and the app will be listening for the frequency of the Silver Eagle. So we're actually gonna start with our fake one. You can see this one says fake copy. We'll balance it on our finger and here we go. And if you take a look, it actually heard the frequencies in a much different position. So it heard the, the black lines are what it heard. The red is what it was looking for. So as you can see, it says not recognized, no resonance frequencies detected. All right, let's put it back down. We're gonna hit start again. And this time we're gonna do it with our, silver, our real Silver Eagle. We'll balance it on our finger and here we go. All right, authentic eagle detected. The ping you produced was consistent with an authentic eagle. And if you look at the bars, you can see that they have the black lines right where it was looking for them for in the green on all three frequencies that it was listening for. So because of that, we know that it is a real eagle. Now, it is possible that if this didn't have the same diameter or thickness that you could replicate this with the sound with something else. And that's why if you're really worried about it, I also recommend getting a scale and a pair of calipers. So you can use a caliper and you can test the diameter. So we know a silver eagle is 40.6. Bingo, 40.58, you know, close enough. It's probably not zero all the way out. And if we throw it on a scale, we will know the exact weight as well. So usually with me, if it passed the ping test, I don't really go any further unless something looks funny or it looks weird to me. At that point, I would be like, all right, let's just dig a little bit deeper. But Generally, this is a very easy and quick way to get through some silver coins, and I highly recommend this method. Now, with this method, there is a device that I do recommend if you want to get it. It's called the Pocket Pinger by Sound Money Metals. Now, the reason that I like this item is if you're doing a lot of silver, like Silver Eagles, for example, if you want to go through a bunch of them, this is a very easy and safe way to test a bunch of them at once without having to worry about them falling off of your finger all the time, which I'll be honest, happens to me a lot. 
So if we go back in the Silver Eagle, the Pocket Pinger basically has these two rubber nubs right here that will hold the coin in place. And there's two ways you can actually test it. You can pull it back down here and let go, and then the other side will bounce off of the black plastic here. Or my favorite method is you can also get a stack stick, which is just a wooden stick and whack it while it's on there. So you know the wooden stick's not gonna damage it. Now a lot of people like to take two silver eagles and cling them together, but personally, I think that might cause damage. You're hitting metal with other metal, that could cause a nick on the rim. So I much prefer to use a stack stick or a Bic pen, and I much prefer to use my pocket pinger to hold it in place so I don't have to worry about dropping it. So I do highly recommend this device. I will have a link for it in the description below if you're interested. It is an affiliate link, so it also supports the channel. But regardless of that, even if this was an affiliate link, I would still recommend this product. It is really, really good. So check out that link down below. Okay, so the next method we're gonna look at is called the acid test. Now, I actually don't recommend this method, but it does exist, and you can get these acid kits online. They basically come in a box like this with a stone. As you can see, I've had mine for a long time. This is a really good way to test like old and broken jewelry if you're picking it up at yard sales or whatever. But testing silver rounds, especially things like silver eagles and Brits, you don't wanna damage them, and unfortunately doing an acid test will do that. So these always come with what's called a jeweler stone, and as you can see, I've used this thing extensively over the years. But essentially what you do is you take some of this muriatic and nitric acid mixture that comes, they have it for silver, they have it for gold, and you basically scratch a little bit of the coin onto the stone right here. So we're gonna start with our fake silver eagle. I'll just give you an example. And we'll scratch it, we'll make a really good scratch right there. And before we even put the acid on there, you can see that this has a very coppery color to it. So it is not going to pass. Let's take our buffalo and scratch it right here and we will test both of these at the same time. All right, so there is our buffalo. And the reason I got a buffalo instead of the eagle that we used earlier is obviously I don't want to damage my eagle. So we have a nice gold, uh, nice gold colored scratch from our fake one or copper and a nice silvery colored scratch from our real one. But here's what happens when you put the acid on it. So if you take our acid, we put a little bit of it on here and we put a little bit of it on here. Let's take a look and see what the difference is. All right, as you can see with our acid on the fake, it actually dissolved it completely. There's nothing left. But where we put the acid on the actual real silver turned a bright powder blue. So this right here lets us know that it is in fact real silver. Now this does not tell you the purity necessarily. Uh, the color will be slightly different, but there's really no good way to know uh, the slight variation in color from like 999 fine to 90%. They both look around the same. I'm just gonna be honest with you. It's a really good way to tell that it is in fact silver. It's a bad way to tell the purity. And honestly, this is not a test, again, that I recommend just because you actually have to damage the coins to do it. Now, some people will also say that you can put the acid directly onto it and watch the way that it reacts, and that is fine as well, but it is not, again, a method that I recommend because even on the real one, you can see the difference there. It's turning black over here, over here. It's turning that powder blue, like I said. On the real one, this will leave a mark. You can see that that mark is definitely left behind. That is one of the worst milk spots I have ever seen. So I don't recommend doing that as well. You can look at the fake one and see that it definitely left the mark there. It actually dissolved through the plating into the copper. So you can see the acid was actually doing some work there and it got all the way into the copper. Another reason I really don't like this method is you always wanna use it in a well-ventilated area because this is very strong acid and trust me, it definitely smells. And if you hear a fan running in the background, you know why. All right, let's check out the next method. So the next test we have is specific gravity. Now I'm not gonna get very specific with a specific gravity test. I did do a video on this a little over a year ago. I'll put a link in the description below and it goes into very fine detail exactly how this works. But essentially you can test the specific gravity or density of anything pretty much including silver and we do it with using a medium such as water so just to show you a quick example of the difference here we're going to take this bar right here and we're going to weigh it and as you can see this bar weighs 31.2 grams now we're going to go ahead and put the uh, water on the scale we're going to tear it out to zero and we're going to tie some string or in my case dental floss around our silver bar and there we go so now that the bar is secure we're going to go ahead and suspend it inside of our medium which in this case case is water and we're going to write down the difference once it stops bouncing around here because I shook it. So we have 2.98 grams. It is locked into place. So 2.98 grams is the difference when this is suspended in water. Now all we have to do is sub or take those two numbers and divide them by each other. So 31.2 divided by 2.98 
gives us a specific gravity of 10.469, so 10.47. So the specific gravity for silver is 10.49. It varies a little bit, 10.47, well within variance. We know this is a real silver bar based on the specific gravity test. Now let's do it with this fake silver bar, which is clearly fake because I destroyed it a while ago. All right, it weighs 31.73 grams. Okay, and as you can see, our fake silver bar has 4.04 .04 grams when suspended. And when you divide 31.73 by 4.04, .04, you get 7.85. That is way off from silver, which is supposed to be around 10.49. So we know doing the specific gravity test that this bar is fake, even if it weren't already damaged. And we know that this bar is real. Again, if you want to see a more detailed explanation of how this test works, I will put a link in the description below. Okay, so our final method is electronic. Now, electronic methods, you know, they definitely have people that like them and people that don't like them. I'm on the side of they're not really bad. I'm kind of a fan of the PMV Pro Mini. That being said... I don't really recommend this thing for the majority of people watching because honestly, the cost benefit for me, even with me dealing with a lot of silver, is really questionable at $1,400 for something like this. Now, the other alternative for electronic testing is an XRF gun. Those run tens of thousands of dollars, and usually those are reserved for like higher end coin shops. So if you have a coin shop near you that does a lot of volume, chances are they have an XRF gun and you can always take your silver in there and they can blast it and you can see literally everything on a spec sheet readout of what's in it, how much copper, how much silver, what's going on. But these are pretty good for what they do. It allows me to get through a lot of silver very quickly. So if I do a local buy, obviously I want to go through it and make sure everything is legit. And we're going to show you how it works. So I already have this set up to save us some time. I did a video review of this a long time ago. So you are feel, feel free to uh, click the link in the description if you want to check it out. But again, I don't recommend this for the majority of people. It just It's too expensive. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and start. We have silver pure. We have it set to one ounce. And we have this one ounce silver buffalo that we put the acid on earlier. Let's put it under there. All we're going to do is press this bar down and it's going to test the bulk resistivity and bulk means it's going all the way through the coin. So as you can see, it is actually in the green at 1.63. So it is testing silver, but I will warn you, there are things like copper that can definitely look like they're passing the test. So you also want to do the specific gravity or dimensions testing. So when you have this bar held down, if you hit dimensions, hit round, it will actually tell you how big it should be based on how thick it was and the purity of the silver. So if we line up one side with the left bar, and as you can see on the right side, it's touching the other, the other line. Uh, it's in the green, which is within variance, but it's actually going directly line to line. So this is perfect. Uh, this is definitely a one ounce silver round. Now we'll take our 2020 silver eagle, also pure silver, right? And as you can see, it is way in the red. Wow. This thing is definitely fake. The machine is saying no. This is not a real silver coin. It's not even close. So I can quickly just get rid of that. Okay, so next thing we'll do is we'll take a Morgan silver dollar. We haven't really done much with these. Is this real? Is this fake? We'll go to metals. We'll go to silver. We'll go to silver coins uh, pre-1900s. Yep, there we go. It should be right. Well, let's put the weight in. So we know what the weight on this is, right? 26.73 grams. That's total weight. Let's put it down. And bingo, it's way in the green, definitely looking good. We'll go to dimensions testing, hit round. And our Morgan silver dollar is definitely a real, let's slide it over just a little bit, definitely a real Morgan silver dollar. So we know that our Morgan is real, we know our Buffalo is real, we know our silver eagle is fake. I was very quickly able to test three pieces of silver, specific gravity, tying the piece of string around it for every single piece would take way too long. However, the ping test would probably be just as quick and doesn't run $1,400, which is why, again, I don't really recommend this for the majority of people watching. That's not to say it's not a great device. I do like the device, but I can't recommend it because the price is just way too high. So there you go, everybody. There are six different methods that you can use to test your silver. Now, some of them I recommend, some of them not so much, just based on price or 
you know, how good they are, how long they take. I'm not a big fan of specific gravity. It's very good for testing if you have a big, thick bar, but if you're going to go through a lot of silver, it could be very slow. I'm a big fan of the ping test for sure. It's one of my favorite ways to test. I'm not a big fan of the acid test because it does cause damage to the coins like in our buffalo here. So if you have a real coin, you throw some acid on it. Now it's damaged and deformed. And yeah, you know, that's how it goes. So not a big fan of that one. Uh, the Sigma, I can't recommend to the majority of people because of the cost. So that is one thing to stay away from. Now, there are other methods that I didn't talk about. One of them would be the magnetic slide. A lot of people talk about the uh, rare earth magnet slide or the, the coin slide. I'm not a big fan of that. And the reason is copper, like this bar right here, actually reacts almost the exact same way silver does. And to the effect that most people would not be able to tell the difference. So I definitely am not a fan of the magnet slide. That is not something for me. Uh, it is one I definitely don't recommend, and that's because it is way too easy to get fooled between copper and silver. If you throw it down a slide and it goes slow, you're like, sweet, it's real, but you never know. It could still be copper because, again, it reacts the same way. But either way, I hope you enjoyed the video. There will be links in the description if you want to take a look at more detailed videos on some of these methods that we talked about in today's video. But other than that, Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. A lot of people that watch this channel aren't subscribed and don't even know it. So check that button. It really helps me out as we get to 100,000 subscribers. And we will see you next time.